Well, it's it's such an honor having you, Rebecca, and you've drawn quite a crowd. We, um, I believe, we had forty people register, which is a record. Wow! So, oh, great! Yeah, a lot of people are interested in hearing about your hearing your story. Well, I hope I make sense at three a.m. <laughs> yes, we'll keep reminding people that it's three three a.m. Anyway. Tell, tell us your Montessori story. How did you discover Montessori? Um, you want me to start right now? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I will be uh, brief in that when I was teaching um, in the elementary school, uh, I had a double wide trailer in the back of my school. And I learned a lot about Montessori just through reading um, and the whole methodology. And I so believed in multi-age grouping that I talked to our principal and I said, you know, um, I'd like to, I was doing a gifted education and special education at the time. So I asked if I could group the kids that were at a certain level and work with them. Um, and uh, he said yes, and uh, let me just say, um, it worked out well, and um, many of my colleagues uh, complimented me in that I was uh, the Montessorian of our public school. Now, that was years and years ago, and when I left teaching, then I, I got into um, accreditation and that's short what I what brought me to where I am today. So. Well tell, tell us about your role now in, in the Montessori world. Okay so I went from um, working as the vice president of the teacher education accreditation council for um, many many years um, 10 years where that they called it TIAC, the Teacher Education Accreditation Council was the accreditor, one of the accreditors for the traditional teacher education. And when I, uh, when TIAC and, and I know I'm gonna use a lot of acronyms. So if that gets confusing, please give me the flash that, yeah you need a better explanation. But here um, there was NCATE, the National Association uh, for the Accreditation of Teacher Education. No, the National Accreditation Council for Teacher Education. So NCATE and TIAC unified to make what now we have uh, CAPE mm -hmm. for traditional um, teacher education, which is the Council for the Accreditation of Educator Preparation. And I wasn't interested in moving on with CAPE, but there was an opening for the president of MAXI, which was the Montessori Accreditation Council, or is the Montessori Accreditation Council for Teacher Education. And I applied and um, got the job in 2011. And um, I guess I didn't know quite what I was walking into back then uh, or the situation that MACD was in, but uh, here we are 12 years later and we're doing really well, so. So what is MACD? And look, it's, it's not very well known yet in Australia, I don't believe. So maybe give us the bigger picture. What, what is MACD and how did it come into existence? What's its origin story? Well, do you want me to talk uh, in a broad sense uh, with regard to accreditation? Yeah, maybe that's a good idea to start. Okay, so MACD is what we would call a recognized accreditor. Uh, here in the US, we are recognized by the US Department of Education. And back in the early 90s, the American Montessori Society went to the US Department of Education to become an accreditor. And the US Department of Education turned them away saying, you need to go back 
and you need to bring together all the uh, what were affiliations at that time in an agreement and form an accreditor together. And that was back, I, I think they started that in um, the late 80s because it wasn't until 1992 that they uh, united and presented their um, application for recognition. Who, so who was they, involved in they, that? Uh, that would be uh, AMI and AMS and um, IAPM and um, IMC. And I these are explain. all, I know these are all yeah. uh, affiliations. So what are the acronyms? IAPC uh, and I IMC. Well, IMC is the International Montessori Council. Tim Selden's there, uh, organization. There were, yep. And there were, these are all uh, affiliations or membership organizations. Mm -hmm. as is uh, AMI USA and the American Montessori Society, AMS. And then there were a group of independents um, in a consortium together that did not affiliate with any organization. Mm -hmm. And um, now there's the Montessori Educators Program International and there's, um, uh, we now have Christian Montessori uh, Association, and these are all affiliates or what we are now calling uh, MACD recognized organizations. We also have Montessori Australia, which mm -hmm. you are um, recognized for as an organization uh, with MACD. Uh, and you will have your uh, affil people affiliate, obviously, programs will affiliate with that organization. And so let me go back a little bit in history to say that these organizations had representatives that met many, many times before the final submission of the standards and competencies which were agreed upon. And I don't know um, if this group would get the fact that these people um, had to agree on these standards and competencies. And it took a long time mm -hmm. uh, for them to sit around the table and agree on what's going to represent all of us, all of them, under the umbrella of national and international accreditation. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so um, this, was, this was truly a process of give and take where the leaders in the Montessori uh, community from uh, very different affiliations and the independents had to learn from one another in order to represent Montessori principles to the government in a unified fashion. Mm. And this was 30 years ago. So uh, mm. you can see we've come a long way mm. and it, it succeeded then and continues to succeed because um, there are different viewpoints about how best to educate uh, a Montessori teacher uh, are listened to by uh, each other. And and what did they get out of that? The, those organizations. Why? What? What was the incentive to agree? Well, they formed the accreditor, which then, um, you know, they believed that the basic the basis of MACD's success. Uh, in being recognized as an international accreditor is fundamental, um, is a fundamental commitment by all our participants to work for the good of the children of the world, mm -hmm. choosing the Montessori method as the language of their work. Um, and so 
accreditation is a, a stamp, I think, of quality that shows uh, that these teachers have graduated from a recognized a program under accreditation. And so those standards, it's like the golden ticket. You can travel with it anywhere in the world. And um, right now we have, um, I think I, I mentioned to you, we have um, students that have graduated from accredited programs in 89 countries mm -hmm. that have taken an accredited course. So yeah. um, the reach is at this moment um, uh, very wide. So MACPI is really an international accreditation body. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. But why? It's worldwide, yes. Just to okay. play devil's advocate, why, why is MACTI really necessary? I mean, isn't AMI the standard setter globally? <laughs> yes. But um, again, this is uh, going back. If you believe in um, the philosophy of AMI, MACTI is, is behind you to support that but not to tell any program which organization that they need to affiliate with. That's entirely up to the program. So we say there are many different philosophies uh, to look at at this time and to examine, and it's what fits with uh, what you believe. Our standards, and our competencies that have been set up are what we would call a threshold. So um, a threshold means you can't go below that, but every affiliation that uh, we deal with, the, the hours for the study are above the threshold. And I'm guessing that's gonna bring up some questions, but it's true that you know, we have to, that group of people 30 years ago had to agree and had to set, I, I, I don't like when we say minimum standards because the government, you know, around the world, government say, what is the threshold that mm -hmm. they meet? And um, we say, we're not gonna tell you what to do. And, this is this is where we start. So you can use what you believe at AMI, AMS to build on that. Mm. So can you talk in in sort of general terms about what those what that threshold is for a teacher Montessori teacher training programs to be able to meet the MACD standards? Well, that would take us a couple of days. Um, <laughs> the because it's different for every single level yeah. so there are thresholds and um i guess i could share my screen uh you know what i can send to you uh, and i may have already is um the uh, crosswalk from credit hours to clock hours which shows that actually um all of the requirements for MACD come out to be about uh, 31 credit hours equals, I don't know, in, in Australia is a master's around 32 to 36 credit hours at a college or university. Is that? I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, okay, so. 48. Yeah. 48. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, we, we like to match it up that way as far as because states recognize, countries recognize credit hours. And when we start to talk about clock hours, it gets a little confusing for the recognition mm -hmm. from governments. So we like to give them a, a full picture that way with regard to um, the rigor of the study under an accredited program. But just so, in, Mark, in, general, in general terms, like what are the components? So for example, could you run uh, a, an online training program 
self-study only and get MACD accreditation? No, we don't. No, face to face. No, because we don't recognize 100% online um, programs. You have to have uh, a residency of 120 hours, which would be about four weeks. And you can divide that um, throughout your program how you see uh, it necessary. Some programs uh, start with a week of residency and they get the cohort together. And then throughout the program, there are different times. But you can, we do not recognize 100% online um, programs. Why, why not? What, why is that? Because we feel that it's really necessary to evaluate the student or the adult learner in the classroom uh, with children or with uh, the materials of face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Now, with there, I will say, you know, we... Again, it's hard to generalize because again, we do not, when a program presents to us what they're doing, we, we look it over, we analyze it. There's uh, when a, when a self-study, and I know to um, our audience, this is a lot of information right now, but let me walk you through what what uh, a program uh, undergoing uh, accreditation uh, would do. They, they send in an application and they state uh, what affiliate, if any, they're going to uh, join. And then we sort of understand a little bit about the philosophy. So you asked me about AMI. We understand, um, I mean, I haven't been, to uh, through the AMI um, course at uh, a program, but I understand the philosophy behind that and behind AMI. And then they start, we open the portal for them and they start to tell their story. We call it a self-study because that actually, is initiated by the beliefs of the program. And then you, when we say, do you have a vision statement? We require that. Do you have a mission statement? And you, you, you begin to write your story. And you will have a guide, obviously, to accreditation, which tells you all of the thresholds in every single area in every single level that has to be met. So when we talk about the criteria, you tell us what you do, right? We don't tell you. And I think when I took, the, took on this position, there was a misconception of accreditation that uh, we tell you what to do. And if you don't do it, then uh, you don't get through the accreditation. And that's, that is not the philosophy. It's the other way around. We give you the framework and then you tell your story because it can't, it can't be the same all the way around the world. Programs in South Africa are very, very different but meet our thresholds than those that are in uh, one of the states here or probably in Australia. You know, there are different mannerisms of presenting this. But isn't the child the same all the world over? Doesn't the child need the same thing everywhere? Back yes, in time yes. to cave people and forward in time to when we're living on Mars? Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, yes, they do, but it's given and presented in a different way because there's different cultures, there's different Mm. Um, materials. Um, I mean, there are, we have programs that are in very impoverished areas that make all their own materials. They can't afford to buy, you know, the materials and have them um, there. So it's just working together to get the same message out worldwide is what we have to do. We have to collaborate. We have to communicate rather than, you know, this 
well, our program is better than your program and we do it right. That's not, that's not the methodology that uh, I would believe that accreditation um, is, you know, supporting at this time. Mm -hmm. And it's not yeah. it's not yeah. going to work as a way forward for Montessori in general for the movement if we compete with each other, and and you know cut the legs down from from one another. We have to collaborate, and it sounds like MACD really does the accreditation thing in a very Montessori way. It's very flexible. It's like freedom yeah. within structure. So it's got the structure. Here here yeah. are the thresholds, and you exactly have what I was going to say. So we um. We think about it this way, we're sort of the umbrella. So as you read through uh, the guide for uh, accreditation, you would meet, and we call this a self-study, and you would, we like the whole community to get together to have input into what is needed in that program to support the teachers to graduate from an accredited program, to then go out and be quality teachers in that community. So mm -hmm. it's a, I mean, we do have people that say, well, this person wrote the self-study, but that's, um, I mean, and excuse me, obviously that happens, but we would like the program director to work with their faculty and say, okay, you know, how many hours are we going to put into child development? How many, how many hours are we going to put into philosophy? We're going to build this program to our needs. Mm -hmm. And it, and this is where we have to meet the thresholds for each area in, let's, let me just pick early childhood. All right, what are we going to do to make sure that we have a sustainable program that prepares these teachers the way we feel is necessary for our community. Does that make sense? Mm. Again, I just have to um, stress the fact that it's a it's a framework, and a, um, I'm being the accreditor. I will just say it's it's been eye opening to see how people have. Uh, build their program and what they, mm -hmm. uh, how they meet the standards and the quality principles. But mm -hmm. let me let me go way back now again and say, Matty, uh, every five years I have to write my uh, proposal and um, application to the Department of Education to say, this is this is what we require. And it has to meet every standard that the Department of Education requires under the law about uh, education. And MACD at this point, I'm very proud to say that we are the only educator mm. uh, accreditor recognized by the US Department of Education. Um, CAPE and AQIP, which are the, for traditional teachers are <clears throat> not recognized at this time by USDE, they're recognized by CHIA, which is the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. And mm. both of those organizations do international accreditation also. Wow, that's so But that being said, you know, they only accredit programs within colleges and universities. The uniqueness of MACD is that our scope covers <clears throat> freestanding institutions programs within colleges and universities and distance education with 120 hours of residency. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I'm pretty proud of, of our uh, ability to accredit a program that somebody calls and says, we'd like to start uh, a teacher education program here in our school. So that would be an institutional because it's not at a college or university. So um, I need to also point out that um, there is an organization called INQUAHE, which is the International Network of Quality Assurance Agencies in Higher Education. And that is a group of international accreditors 
that get together and talk about what it's like to accredit um, programs worldwide. And they might be located in, um, I'm, in, I don't know, Germany, and they're an accreditor for a certain, um, I, I, I don't wanna say teacher education because it's not all teacher education, but we all get together and talk about what it's like to be an accreditor uh, internationally and try to work together in that way, which I find really important also. Yeah, why, why doesn't the US government recognize CAPE and, <clears throat> and other traditional education? <laughs> well, they're in the application process, so we'll have to wait and see. Oh, they don't okay. meet the, they can't meet the standards right now of uh, USDE, but they feel like if they're under CHIA, um, that they do. That's the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. Mm -hmm. okay. And we can't because they don't recognize accreditors necessarily that accredit freestanding institutions. So um, it's- a, do, Does the US government give Montessori much attention? Very much, very much. I mean, as far as, well, it, the attention is that they recognize us as a legitimate mm -hmm. international accreditor. And um, I think I mentioned to you that Every year we have a symposium and we invite uh, people, all of our program directors and faculty and to come. And the, these are representatives of all of the different affiliations. Yeah. I, I really do stress that it's important that we sit around the table. Yeah. I mean, Mark, you and I sat for, for years with the Montessori Leaders Collaborative and the first two couple of meetings nobody spoke to each other and yeah. then by the time we were finished we were so sad to to yeah. not meet anymore and it it forms um an understanding um a willingness to collaborate and most i mean you can agree to disagree but you learn from other uh, affiliations and uh, people about what they do, but we don't sit around and criticize each other because, oh, well, they don't have enough hours for, yeah. you know, this particular course. And how could they, how could they say that they uh, mm. graduate quality Montessori teachers? No, that's not the way it is. Would be hard for the government to take it, Montessori seriously if we kind of talk to each other and agree. And that was the one thing that um, the USDE 30 years ago said to AMS. No, we're not going to, you can't accredit yourself. You yeah. need to form an organization around all different organizations and agree on what you're going to have as your standards and your competencies. We call yeah. them quality principles now. Yeah. And I think to, to this crowd, I would say, if you go to the, MACD website, which is just MACD.org. Um, on one of the drop down menus, it gives you all the documentation. You can download a guide to accreditation. Mm -hmm. And it really is a nice um, look into what we do and the requirements and the broad spectrum of um, the idea of accreditation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. But again, to your point, it's not a competition. I can't say it enough. It's just not. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, uh, the so, child is the most important part of my work. But I can't, you know, when, when we go to the, the states here in the United States and we say, look, our students have been through a rigorous program that is accredited by MACD under the US Department of Education, you should recognize those graduates for a license to teach in a public Montessori school or private Montessori school anywhere yeah. in your state. Yeah. And we have 10 states now. Please don't ask me to list them at this time. 
right now. Being 3 a.m. Uh, 3 30. Yeah, 3 a.m. Yeah, oh, it's 3 30 Edmonton. So, um, but I also have um, a document called MACD by the Numbers, which continually um, is encouraging to me and I think to your folks that are uh, present today. Um, 18 countries, there are 205 MACD accredited locations around the world. That includes um, additional locations. So, and I know, I, I really understand this is a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So if this is not, but uh, there's no clarity here, mm -hmm. um, not just because it's 3 a.m., but um, because it's a lot of information, no. please tell me. So um, a location is but, a training site. A training site, correct. So and, 250. Two, um, 205. Five, okay. Training in center. In 18 countries. In 18 countries, but students come from different countries to those countries, as I said. So yeah. adult learners registered with MACD represent 89 different countries and all 50 states. Mm. So um, at what, this time, What's the percentage of schools in the U.S. now that are Montessori? Do you do you have any idea? Yeah, I I would prefer to kind of stay away from schools so that we don't mix up the idea of we we don't accredit the schools. Yeah, we only accredit the teacher education program. Right, but um, I'm just from, from the National the Center. Yeah, or worldwide or just in the United States? There's well, just only... in the US. Well, the public schools are growing um, at a massive rate right now, which is why we need um, we need trained teachers that graduate from an accredited program. And I'll get back to NAMC in a minute. Um, but uh, over 5,000. And how many public schools, roughly, do you think there are? I, it goes, it's different from state to state. Mm. In, in South Carolina right now, they have more public Montessori schools than they have traditional schools. And we always mm. say, you know, who would have thought that South Carolina would be wow. a leader in um, public Montessori? But it is at, at a rate um, that I am just... I can't believe that's growing, astonishing. Which is why, which is why we need those. But it, we're having that worldwide, also. Yeah, a lot of public Montessori schools. But um, back to uh, recognition. I, I had a guest in, from the Netherlands over the weekend, and and she was saying that there are actually more Montessori schools in the Netherlands now that are Montessori than traditional. That's yes. where we need to be, right? To bring well, that is, and and I think that there's a better understanding these days, um, uh, with regard to Montessori. Mm. Um, I can't. I you know when I was just starting twelve years ago in this role and working with um, states and governments, I'll, I'll never forget that this uh, one leader in a state said to me, I thought that Montessori was a cult. You know, what? Mm. You know, it just, and then, then on a very positive note, the governor of, of Montana wrote me this beautiful letter saying, of course we will recognize any graduate from a MACD accredited program in our state for full licensure. So they they don't say you can teach in a public Montessori school, private Montessori school, or public school. They say if you come to our state, you're a teacher, mm. and that's wow. that's really what I my goal is yeah. worldwide is to get this message out through our programs that accreditation is important. 
you wouldn't go to a doctor, really. I don't know. I'm just stating this. I wouldn't in the U.S. that didn't graduate from an accredited medical school. So it's it's more that way. Now there is the reason why we um, don't recognize 100% online and is because there is a group called the it's NAMC and right off the top of my head at the moment I cannot think of what the acronym you can look it up North American Montessori Center okay thank you Mark Dave Gaussman <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're a hundred percent online and they don't require a practicum or student teaching and the program is inexpensive and um, comparatively so well, it's in, it's convenient, right? And don't we want more Montessori teachers out there? So we should be making it more convenient and cheaper, shouldn't we? It's not a rush job. It, it's not. You have to, it, if you're going to prepare a teacher, it's a methodical, well thought out program. And it doesn't just take six weeks and you have to work with the kids and the, the children in the classroom and you have to have had training in the manipulatives and the materials. Yeah. I, I can't state it enough. It's not something. I like, I like your analogy well, of going to see a doctor. You wouldn't see a doctor who did their training online, I guess, right? No, and never saw a patient or practice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about why we say practicum. It's, a, it's practicing. It's um, getting feedback. Um, so yeah, but I will say because of the need and the press for teachers, there are school districts that are sending their teacher or their student, I'm sorry, their teachers to these pro to this program because it's quick and then they can put them back into the public school system. It's not what we want. It's not what I want. I don't think it's what anyone that is uh, a Montessori. So that, that program would not qualify for MACD accreditation? No. No. No, it, it wouldn't even meet close to the thresholds that we have for uh, our competencies and our standards. Yeah. Well, um, after I, I, I believe I read on the NCMPS National Center for Monitoring the Public Sector site that there are something like 560 now public schools in in the US that are Montessori and about 150 of those go all the way to grade 12. Yes. So that's um, amazing. We have in Australia okay. 11 public Montessori programs and um, I'm embarrassed to say that about half a percent of schools here are, are Montessori. Um, so it's we've got a long way to go. What, how do you think, what, what is the way to move the movement forward? Not just in Australia but, but worldwide. I mean even even in the US the percentage of Montessori schools is uh, you know, it's less than 10%, right? It's still, it's, when I you're, When you're talking about Montessori schools, you're not talking about, you're talking about public Montessori schools, or are you talking about old, all? Old Montessori schools, yeah. Well, there, there does seem to be that there is um, a big uh, surge in Montessori at this time. Yeah. But I will also say, you know, in our city where I live in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia, I would love to send my two grandchildren to a Montessori school, but there's no public Montessori. Yeah. There's nothing that is affordable to, uh, let's just say my daughter, who's a middle school teacher and can't afford you know, $30,000 to send both boys mm. to school. We need more public mm. Montessori schools. That's sad that the president of MACD can't send her <laughs> grandchildren to Montessori. Yes, so sir. How, how it is. We... Well, we just have to get the word out. Again, I, um, 
our collaboration. Well, it's been 115 like, years now. It isn't hasn't the word got out yet? Well, I haven't been around 150 years, but I um, sometimes feel that way. I um, <laughs> all I can say is that we have to collaborate and communicate across the borders. Yeah. And I, I will I will just compliment you all because you know meeting with uh, you and Hani and Alex and Liz um, has been so inspirational and uh, Susan there you are uh, in talking about the work and what we need to do and how you know it, it, yes it's a slow process but we agree how important it is and we navigate through that and we you know it's one mm -hmm. foot in front of the other to get the word out which is why we're having this meeting to talk about the importance of accreditation having a unified voice and i believe that the accreditor does that mm -hmm. and that's what you know if you go you ask me a question about china well we have dozens of programs that are accredited in china mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's important, but is it is it different than what you will have in your programs in Australia? Yes, but they still, as you look at the framework of MACD and, and you say, okay, they've met these standards, these standards, these standards, that's, that's great, I feel. And that means we have the same um, motivation and uh, ideas about, the importance of Montessori. So would you say that the reason after 115 years that the president of MACD can't get her grandchildren into Montessori school has to do with the kind of inability or unwillingness of Montessorians in general, not always, in general, to no. collaborate and talk to each other and cooperate? No, I well, have, it has only to do with the fact that we don't have somebody that's come along here in town. I've actually thought about doing it myself and finding a location and opening a Montessori school for the public. But um, when you, you talk about, uh, okay, so that would mean I would have to go to, um, Elmar County public schools to be approved to open a public school system to a public Montessori school to be recognized to be called, you know, a public school. Yeah. And jumping through the hoops, to, it has to be recognized by the state. And that's probably one of the reasons. Yeah, so but doesn't that follow we demand? To knock down, we have to knock down the barriers at the state le level. So yeah. that state le um, legislators and people in departments of education and people around the world understand the methodology yeah. and say, of course, of course, we'll support that. Now, why not, no, none of our public schools here in Charlottesville have uh, even half of the school as a Montessori school mm. is. And I pushed so maybe the maybe the reason is that we don't have a big Hollywood blockbuster movie about Maria's life yet, starring, you know, Meryl Streep or or Rebecca Pelton as as Maria. <laughs> you know, we have the King's Speech, for example. You know, whenever it was fifteen years ago, but we don't have. How, how do we not have a movie about Maria's life to capture the imagination of of the general public? Um, because we're too busy doing our work to get the word out together, to collaborate on this level. And we don't need a movie, we just need each other. Yeah, well said. Are so there I, any, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, any, any questions from anybody else? Does any of this make sense? Of course it yeah. makes sense. Okay, I, I, I mean, just the, the logistics of accreditation and why it's important. I just can't, I can't tell you uh, enough about that. 
play the game right? There's a lag. Okay. Somebody. Okay. So how how do we move the the movement forward? <clears throat> I'll ask that again. Like, how do we how do we step it up another level so that we have in the United States, in Australia, the situation that we have in the Netherlands, where we've got more Montessori or in South Carolina more Montessori schools than traditional schools, so that we can start to bring Dr. Montessori's dream of reforming society from within to reality. What do we need to do? Well, different. You know, every Every country has a different government. Um, and I found that, you know, like um, my friend in, in Montana, who was the governor, it pulls a lot of weight when you get the word out to people that have the power to also um, change uh, the thought process and the, uh, around um, you know, I'm working with the states, but I also work with China and I work with, you know, many, many different countries like I'm working with you all. It's, it's, it's getting the uh, ideas to the government around how important it is and continuing to push that mm. and helping them have a better understanding of the methodology and how important it is, especially now for our uh, children and just keep, you know. Yeah, so to-, to, and to and so We meet like this together. Now we've got, I don't know how many people you have online. I don't see everybody, but you take that and now you spread it. And if each person that's here today goes and spreads the, the what they've learned and talks about it, then you you build um, that kind of communication. And everybody has a connection somewhere. Mm. There is exactly the problem. For example, on an AMI diploma, it states you are not allowed to train other people. So how to deal with this? The point is that AMI is very, very expensive to do the training. You cannot do it beside the job. Mm. AMI had courses, for example, here in Thailand, they had only one month in school. So I actually, the accreditation has to be removed according to what you said. It has to be four months, but it was only one month. This is causing problems. The people are not no more qualified. An AMI diploma, from my experience, what I saw, well, um, we just have set up a, a, a Montessori school here. And uh, the owner said, Andy, AMI, it sounds nice, but we are no more looking for an AMI teacher. We are looking for a Montessorian who likes Montessori, who knows how to do Montessori, and who knows most, exam most, most likely actually how to teach, how to deal with a whole group of children, because the AMI is not qualified to teach. The other problem, and the biggest problem is actually here in Thailand, we have now people applying for a job here, but we cannot employ them. Simple fact, they need a bachelor degree. Mm -hmm. The Montessori education, AMI, AMS, or whatever it's called, it's not a bachelor. So forget about it. We don't need this. So what, in my opinion, what we need is what NextGenU has already for medical, uh, for the medical certificate. When you, when you search nextgenu.org, there is Erica Frank. She has built up an organization about 2000 and she has a huge support from WHO and other things because they, they realized we need more teachers. Yeah, we, if we wanna make Montessori more public, we need more teachers all over the world. And mm -hmm. to get more teachers, we need cheaper training. We need better training. Now, most of the Montessori resources in theory are online for free. So this part can already be lowered in price. Then I totally agree that you need a practical part. This has to be completely revised also by Magde. 
So these, these, these practical hours, they have to be schools where they, they can go in the, in the near area. Because if we want to spread Montessori around the world, we cannot let, let people travel around the world uh, to, to, to go to, to find a school where they can go. This is not possible. So mm -hmm. we have to revise this, this, this whole standards actually to a level where they can say, wow, okay, we can do this here. Mm -hmm. Thanks, then, do, you, do you want to comment, Rebecca? Um, I mean, uh, this is, again, um, uh, I don't know what to say to Andy. This is a, a, a problem I think we run into, but um, not, not all training. So, we do have online training, but we're saying that there has to be um, a face-to-face. -face. That's what we're saying. And you can't, you can't learn something. What were you saying in four weeks? What, what was that again? T tell me what you were saying. No, the, four, the, the, pr four the practical, months? no, the practical phase was, was, was one, the, one, uh, one month in a school oh, one where, month. She, uh, where she had a mentor and did practice a little bit yeah so this is not yeah. enough no um i think that that's uh, something that we hear um mark a lot about mm. training and the expense so again, you don't hear, you don't I, hear about the expenses that it's, it's very expensive mm. for for an american teacher who earns a lot of money in comparison to someone who is teaching here in Thailand who earns about 9,000 to 15,000 Thai baht. That's about 300 to 400 euro, uh, dollar. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. simply cannot afford. It's the same with the, uh, the IMC 2023. A huge Montessori conquest takes place in Thailand. Yeah, well, you won't see many, many Thai people there because they simply can't come there. Who is able to pay six hundred uh, dollar? It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. So, and this is Montessori all over. Yeah, and if and we like want to promote said, a, public schools, a, we need to make it cheaper. Yeah, that's. Um, I have to say though that that is one thing I do not have any control over, except to. Um, get the word out that yes, we need to have more affordability for training, um, and that that's why I think the that uh, NAMC is so um, popular. It's twenty five hundred dollars for a, a training, and you get your album given to you, and mm. well, I don't know. I think it's like six weeks, and you're good to go. I mean, so training it's, it's, and education is not, it's just not, it isn't cheap. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, again, how much is it? 26? I think it's $2,500 US dollars. 2,500 US yeah. dollars. And six weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this would be something which would be affordable, actually. Because I did my training, uh, which was AMI approved in Germany, zero to 12 actually. And this was at the time when I did it was 1,500 uh, uh, mark, also what is the comparison to, to Euro. And in Germany, the people are not doing the AMI training. They have an AMI training center there, but this is full of Russians actually going to the uh, training center in, in Munich. And then the, and the real training, the mass of teachers is actually coming from the national organization, which is doing an AMI approved training, which has so, been approved by Mario Montessori so long time ago. Yeah. Well, Andy, let me say this. Um, MACD doesn't tell the students uh, where to go. This is choice. We are, you know, um, an agency that uh, says you have to have uh, certain amount of training to be a teacher, to be a Montessori teacher that's necessary. That again, these all these organizations got together 30 years ago to sort of plan out again the threshold of requirements. And um, this is just as a as an accreditor, this is this is what we do. 
This is what we see as quality. Um, we cannot we cannot set the uh, tuition amount for uh, a program. Yeah. Uh, education here in the states obviously is expensive, but um, we do have programs that are, like I said, virtual with 120 hours of residency that are, have cut the costs to get more teachers. Mm. And um, Rebecca, what um, navigating the waters? We're 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 closing in on the the end of our hour. Let's um finish with um, maybe what signs of hope do you see for Montessori worldwide and in the US? Um, I think that the, we, like Andy said, we have to get the word out about what are the needs um, of our uh, programs in order to educate our teachers in a way that we believe we have to communicate. I think one of the biggest things is um, ending the idea that it's a competition. Mm -hmm. There's choice. We have choice everywhere. We've got to stop saying that um, one like organization is yeah. better than one another. It's it's different. Yeah. And, and I think that we all tend to do it at, at times. And yeah. so we just have to stop ourselves and say, it's necessary to have this education. It Look, seems like there's, if, if there's can, some... There's a like post COVID. There's there's a, a great um, kind of uh, upset in in training in general. A lot a lot of creativity happening in the way that training happens, not just in Montessori but in general. Right. And, and maybe this is a time where, in the Montessori world as well, we need to start being really creative about bringing quality ed, ed, quality teacher training <clears throat> to Montessori in a way that um is more accessible and more affordable but still right. maintains a level of quality right may i, may I sorry i feel i can uh, say something on that line as well to rebecca that um uh, when we when what andy's talking about as well is really inequality in the in the people able to afford to pay in thailand where they're getting equivalent of you know you know twenty dollars a week pay or something like that compared to an American or in the on Australia where they're getting a thousand dollars a week pay so yeah. the the it's like what we've done also with AMTU our training organization is that we're offering it to people in Nepal at at the, at the Nepalese's affordability not at the Australian or the American affordability of you know yeah. five thousand dollars so we're doing it like $25 for a training, uh, an introductory course, instead of in Australia here, they people pay $700 for it. They pay $25 for it in Nepal because that's, we, we meet the people, meet the need, the, where the people are at, that's where we meet them uh, with yep. the Australian Montessori Training Institute and the training that we offer. So, and that, yeah, and that's the same in um, and, many and of that, our Af African countries also. Yeah. So yeah. this is where the problem is, where some of the training organisations who are, um, and also you know Congress and 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 they're offering that they're, they're selling the the product at the at the international value rather than the local value, and that's mm -hmm. making it very hard for people to learn. Yeah, right. Rebecca, thank you so yeah. much for your time the, the, this morning. Um, well, you're welcome. Four a.m. Your time, really you're appreciate welcome. you. Well, I hope yeah. it was helpful. Um, I will say, you know, we're. We're all here to listen and um, Andy, I hear you. We, I think that uh, if we all talk about this and, and put some of this into action that it's not affordable in places. And like you said, honey, that's a, a wonderful solution in helping those in Nepal. Um, and that seems to be um, one way but we need to communicate more in uh, strategies on, on helping. Mm. But if, if it's, I, I um, realize that if, if this NAMC is the only way, at least it's something, right? Mm. At least they're getting something. So we have to think about that. We would rather have um, that than have, 
a teacher that has had no training walk into the classroom. Mm. So I think that we just have to be open and keep up these conversations. And I certainly mm. appreciate uh, your time today. Right. And um, it's uh, been nice, mm. nice to be with you all. And thank you I again you for your help. for your um, help in bringing MACTI to Australia through Montessori Australia, and for your flexibility and willingness to work with us. Very welcome. It's been my pleasure. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. Um, I will put my email in the chat. It's uh, pretty simple if I can spell my name right. Um, don't hesitate to write. And again, um, the website is just uh, macd.org. It has a lot of information there. Hopefully it will support uh, some of the things that I mm. uh, said today. And um, again, thank you for your time. Yes. And we we'll look forward to getting together again soon. Hopefully we can bring you out to Australia sometime. I'm planning on it for next year, yeah, for good. sure. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank See you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks. Well, and Andy, you. and Andy, get in touch with me if you like, and I'll pass you on to that uh, the introductory Montessori programs for the Thai people's level of um, income. Yeah, yeah. I, I know we, we have some some here and we're going on the Saturday uh, meetings on the 18th. We have another meeting where we have yeah. this, where people can actually join, but uh, we need more funding, actually. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. True. No worries. Yeah. We'll help you out. Thanks. All right. I will get in touch. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Annie. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.